rates rallied strongly in late 2023 when the Fed indicated that would have at least three rate cuts in 2024. But since then, rates have now dipped back to lower levels and in some cases the dip has been quite significant. But I believe that this is an opportunity because the expectations for lower interest rates have not changed. In fact, according to the FedWatch tool, the market is now pricing a near 100% chance of at least one rate cut by June of 2024. Therefore, the recent dip didn't occur because of a change in outlook. Rather, I think it's because some short-sighted investors are taking profits, not realizing that REITs remain undervalued even following the recent rally. Right now, REITs are still priced at a 26% lower levels than two years ago, and that's despite growing their cash flow by nearly 10% since then. The reason why REITs are still down so much is because a lot of investors are still comfortable hiding in money market funds earning them a 5% yield at the moment. But as interest rates are cut, I expect a lot of this capital to come right back into high yielding REITs. Therefore, I'm buying the deep. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about two specific REITs that I'm buying at the moment. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I'm a CFA charter holder, but not a financial advisor. So make sure to do your own research before buying any of these REITs. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about two of the best REITs to buy for 2024. These REITs are not nearly as famous as Realty Income or Alexandria Real Estate or Prologis, Public Storage or any of these mega cap rates but I, as you'll see shortly these are in my opinion quite a bit more attractive before i get into it can you please click the like button that really helped me a lot to produce this content for you and grow this channel thank you so much in advance so the first read that i think is quite opportunistic today is called farmland partners ticker symbol fpi this is the leading farmland rate and just recently we saw its share price recover to around 13 dollars per share but from there on it has now dropped back to the low 11s I think that this is a great entry point because we estimate the net asset value of the REIT to be around $18 per share, meaning that it's priced today at around a 40% discount to its net asset value, or put differently, its real estate equity is priced at 60 cents on the dollar. The reason why it has gotten so cheap is because its share price has been closely correlated with the rest of the REIT market of the past year. It's been steadily declining, but all while its share price was declining, the value of farmland kept increasing. And so as a result, now you, the valuation is historically low. The interesting thing here is that the management team of Farmland Partners is actively taking advantage of this dislocation between the public and the private market by taking some of its assets and selling them in the private market and then taking these proceeds to buy back shares at a discount in the public market, creating a lot of value for patient long-term oriented shareholders. Last year alone, they sold about 120 million worth of assets at a 15% gain on average, and then they used these proceeds to buy back a lot of shares of the company. In addition to that, it's also interesting to know that the chairman and founder of the company, Paul Pittman, also recently bought about 1 million worth of shares in the open market, and that's despite already having the bulk of his net worth invested in the stock of the company. He's bullish on the stock of his company and understandably so because Farmland has historically been one of the best asset classes there is outperforming bonds, stocks, REITs, gold, most other asset classes and today Farmland Partners is offering you the opportunity to buy some Farmland at a large discount to its fair value. I think that as interest rates return to lower levels later this year, investors will regain interest in lower yielding real assets like farmland and as a result we will also see a recovery in the share price of farmland partners. I expect about 30 to 50% upside from here as the share price closes closer to the NAV of the company. And again, the interesting thing here is that as long as they remain discounted, the company is now committed to keep selling assets, buying back stock. And eventually, if they fail to close this discount, I really wouldn't be surprised if they decided to simply liquidate the entire REIT. Again, the chairman and founder of the company has significant skin in the game. And I think that eventually his patience will run out. Hey, before I go into the second REIT, let me know in the comment section below what's your favorite read to buy today and I'll let you know my thoughts about them. Then the second read that I really like at the moment is Camden Property Trust ticker symbol CPT. This is one of my favorite apartment rates because it's a large cap with a very strong A- investment grade rating, a fantastic track record, very attractive Sunbelt assets for the most part and despite that it's today heavily discounted. 
it did not drop quite as much as farmland partners in this recent dip but it also had not recovered as much in the previous rally and yet it's now down still as much as the broader REIT market. I believe that the main reason for this recent underperformance of Camden is the rising loan delinquencies in the multifamily market. There are a lot of private landlords that are over leveraged with LTVs at 60 to 70 percent, a lot of variable debt and so they are facing great pressure in the face of the recent surge in interest rates. Some of them may not survive, will end up defaulting on their loans and losing their properties to their lenders. If this happens in large quantity, it could put pressure on the valuations of multifamily properties as well, causing the NAV per share of REITs like Camden Properties Trust to decline in the near term. But there is a trade-off here for well-capitalized REITs like Camden because they have very strong balance sheets with an average LTV of just around 30%, significant liquidity, and so they are very well positioned actually to buy a lot of these properties from distressed sellers that are over-leveraged. Another Sunbelt REIT called Mid America Apartment Community has actually already bought one such property at a very attractive valuation in the third quarter last year. If I recall, that was in Phoenix, Arizona. But I think we'll see a lot more of that in the coming quarters now as these well capitalized large REITs take advantage of these over leveraged private landlords and buy their properties at large discounts to their fair value. So overall, I think that this growing loan delinquencies is a case of short-term pain for long-term gain in that the valuations of our multifamily communities may drop a bit in the near term, but this is going to allow these REITs to accelerate their growth by buying a lot of properties at attractive valuations. And so all in all, for a long-term oriented investor, this is probably a net positive. Even then, Camden is today priced at what we estimate to be a 35% discount to its net asset value, which is an exceptionally large discount for a large REIT like Camden. Such large discounts are not unusual at all for small REITs like Farmland Partners, but they are quite exceptional for large A-rated REITs like Camden that have long track records. Those typically trade at closer to their net asset value or even at a premium to it. I think that the weakness in the multifamily space is going to last for another year or so as all the new supply hits the market. But from there on out, the supply will go down significantly as developers get burnt. And then times of oversupply will turn in times of undersupply and we'll see a nice acceleration in rent growth in 2025 and 2026. I think that as rent growth accelerates, even as interest rates return to lower levels, that's going to serve as a strong catalyst for multifamily REITs like Camden Properties and lead to a recovery in their share prices. I expect about 30% upside from here and while you wait, you're earning a 4% dividend yield and the REIT is creating value for shareholders by again buying properties from distressed sellers, developing some other assets and paying down some debt. So if you missed the read buying opportunities of 2023, now this recent dip is giving you a second chance. However, I think that the window of opportunity is closing here and as interest rates return to lower levels later this year, REITs are going to surge a lot higher. If you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, you can join High Yield Landlord, which is my REIT newsletter for a two week free trial. It's hosted on Seeking Alpha. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And otherwise, once more, if you could please click the like button, that would really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance. See you at my next one. Bye bye.